Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our first segment of our fall flower festival. Guys, school is back in. Football games are on Friday under the lights. Yeah, pretty soon we're going to be talking about pumpkin spice everything. And of course, wedding season is going to get started. So we're super excited. Uh, Gilberto Espinoza of Dogwood and Fur is my very first guest and will be creating a large autumn inspired urn arrangement perfect for weddings. While he's designing, we're going to be chatting about floral design and answering your questions. So if you have any questions, be sure to post them in the comments um, and we will get to them as time permits. I have an amazing day planned for you guys. We are kicking things off with Gilberto right now. Then at 12.15, David Dawson will be on with his beautiful lineup of fall flowers, answering all your care and handling questions. Then Deanna will be joining me instead of Jamie as we were advertising because she's under the weather. I hope you can feel better soon, Jamie. Um, and Deanna's going to be sharing lots of tips on how to finalize or how to utilize pre-book to its fullest extent to reduce your wedding season stress. And finally, Allison Ellis of uh, Real Flower Business is going to be joining me, and she's wrapping up the day at 145 with insight on pricing your weddings for profit and how to manage subs and stay on budget. So all really good stuff that we hope is going to be really helpful for this fall season coming up. Um, I sent out an email. Hopefully you guys got it. If not, you might want to subscribe, just saying. Um, but I mentioned in the email uh, that just went out, for the best viewing experience, please join us on either Facebook or YouTube. So yes, we're streaming live on Instagram, guys. Hello, hello. Um, but if you guys are on Instagram, you might want to hop on over to one of those two platforms just because um, for a few of our things, um, most of the day actually. So our first three sessions are gonna be all kind of horizontal format, which doesn't work well with the Instagram vertical. Um, so the sides are gonna be cut off or it might be really small. So I hope you can join us over on Facebook or YouTube. So join us over there. Um, also wanted to let you guys know, I've gotten lots of questions. If you can't watch um, the whole day or only a couple sessions or even half a session, that's totally fine. As per usual with every other live that we do, um, we will be posting the replays of today's segment. So I'm going to do a recap on the blog of all the different um, replays, and um, that will be there for you with the videos. Um, I will do a podcast probably on some of them um, and the show notes. So that will be all there for you guys. Also, before we get started, again, say hello. I like to know where you guys are all watching from, listening from, uh, let us know. Um, and again, post your comments, but also wanted to let you know that we have um, some exciting things happening. So at the end of the month, we have a brand new design challenge that we're going to be launching. And I definitely want you to join the fun because we've teamed up with the breeder of Excellence Jip, Dan Zeiger, to give away a trip to Ecuador for two for one lucky grand prize winner. How amazing is that? That's like super, super exciting, right guys? Um, also, and you can get um, information, of course, that'll be up on our website once we have the info, right guys? Um, but also I wanted to remind you, are you our next Mayish Design Star? We're looking for them. So if you're interested in applying, we're accepting applications to the end of September. So hopefully you get that in if you haven't already. I uh, just wanted to let you know, a little reminder. And then also wanted to make sure that you guys are aware of our new Mayesh web app. Um, we have a lot of information up on the blog. So you can go to the blog, you can get the details there. Um, but it's a great way to just have uh, Mayesh.com at one click uh, on your computer or phone and you can enable and note notifications to get updates and exclusive deals. So definitely check that out. Um, and with that, let's get started guys. Good morning, Gilberto. Good morning, Yvonne. How are you? I am good. Thank you so much for joining us and being my first guest for today's Flower Fall Fest. No, thank you for inviting us. My favorite season is around the corner, and I'm so, so excited about this. So. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Good, good, good. So before we get started and what you have all going on on that table, which looks amazing, uh, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started as a floral designer? Yes, of course. So uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Gilberto. Uh, I'm the creative director of Dogwood Fur. So um, we started a company basically during COVID 
and from Venice down here, and it's been really, really uh, amazing trip. And um, how do you ask titles of Florida? That's a good question. Um, I feel like all of florists out there, when we were kids, we never think about like, oh, I want to become a florist. You know, it's something that you you find down the road. It's kind of like a renaissance process. Process. I feel like if we love florists, that I mean, um, I love my path. Is so. so um, in two thousand. Give me one second, my cat. Give me one second, my cat is going nuts. There you go. Sorry. It's all um, good. It's the beauty of being <laughs> live. I know. <laughs> Sorry about my cat. So, um, yeah, I mean, I found being a florist uh, in that process where discovering myself about what I have to do, what, how can I express myself and um, find this path in, in this career. So that's how I started. I went to school. Uh, for two years, not only to learn how to design, you know, it was a lot of coverage in the process. Um, it was learning about the industry, how the industry works, and uh, all of that. So that's how we started being in Florence. Very good. So, Gilberto, will you be able to speak a little bit louder? Let's see if that, that works, because um, people, I think, are having a little bit of hard time and it, it got choppy, but now it's better. So there's not choppiness. Yeah, I wonder if like, um, yeah. I mean, is, is it, look, that sounds better? Yeah, that sounds better to me. Okay, perfect. Great. So I'm gonna start to speak louder. Awesome, good, good, good. Thank you, thank you. All right, so um, guys, if you're listening, let me know if that sounds better to you. I feel like that is good. Um, someone just hopped over from IG. Oh, that's Allison Ellis. Thanks, guys. And yeah, just a quick reminder, guys, if you're just popping on right now, if you're on Instagram, I still see like about 40 of you guys over there. Um, if you want to like hop on over to Facebook or Instagram, that's just going to be a better viewing experience. Um, so that way you can see everything that Gilberto is doing. So Gilberto, do you want to let us know what's on the table and in the urn in front of you and what you're going to be doing today? Of course. So uh, basically, we we uh, we'll be talking about trends for this fall season because fall is around the corner. And um, with my sales rep here in Mayor's Crown Club, uh, Valerie, we were discussing about. Can you hear me? Is it is it better now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we were discussing about what can we take as an inspiration for fall season, right? So uh, we were kind of like brainstorming about, okay, so fall season, what do you think about season? Well, it's just still cozy, it's not winter, it's warm tones. Uh, so we came with some ideas about fall season, so I'm gonna read it for you because actually it's really funny. Um, for example, the one that actually I chose is named Ralph Lauren of Tonal Blues, which is rich leather accented with an equestrian vibe deep dark colors to emulate Ralph Lauren's signature style, glossy wood tones. And of course, we're gonna feature by artists like, um, for example, we have some Admisha Roses, we have some uh, Catalates, some Catinas, because we want this dark burgundy colors, of course. We have, for example, these rustic hydrangeas, um, uh, these Decolote Vernaculas, which I'm obsessed with. They have like this brown, uh, burnt red tones in it. And um, also some other of the trends that we talk about it, it was for example, the plate for Nettie's adaptation, which is whether it was the bright yellow plate shares horribly word, or the grungy tattered planners Kurt Cobain in Eddie Vedder work. We can all agree they give us the sense of warmth and space again. It's the warmth of fall season, right? And then the Central Park in the fall, that's another uh, horror part of the trend that we were talking about it, which is the Central Park strolls, hot coffee, cinnamon sprinkles, leaves changing colors, branches rattling in the script, cold breeze, magic in the air, with witching season. So that one I think is more, it's more like really, really hard for on fall season. I wanted to focus more about a feeling and a story because at the end of the day, I feel like all of us, we get inspiration by pop culture, by fashion, by history, whatever is around you. So 
that's what I chose. I chose Rob Flower and Inspiration. Awesome. I love it. And and shout out to Val too for all the help that she gave us and in providing a little bit of inspiration. So yeah. um you highlighted some of the specific varieties that you're using. Do you wanna kind of um get into the the design of it and we can talk about you know what you're doing and then I have a bunch of questions for you too and I'm hoping our audience will have some questions as well. Definitely. So I mean eventually my plan was to make this big one live but I know that we can kind of be chit chatting and I love to chat this thing. So I think it will be fair for all of you guys to see the final product finishing here because we have just one hour. So I will kind of like chat and have a conversation with you while I'm designing in here. Uh, so feel free to pop any questions you wish uh, and I'm going to start. So uh, first things first, I'm going to talk about my mechanics. My mechanics in here is I have a huge pink frog in here. And also, I'm using this Holy Chapel, uh, how, how she called it, pillows? Pillow, yeah. Yeah, like a pillow. So this is 100% recyclable. You know, you can use it and use it and reuse it, no matter how many times. So this is what I'm using for mechanics and, of course, waterproof tapes. And um, I'm going to jump starting with my first step, which is greens, because greens are going to give me the structure, the lines, and everything to create all this drama. Um, I'm going to use for greens these uh, maple, Japanese maple leaf, and some cotinus first. I love it. Um, oh. One of those items may or may not be in David's fall flower product showcase, guys. Just saying. Uh, the, uh, cotinus? <laughs> one of them i'm not i'm not spoiling the surprises <laughs> <laughs> well um, I, have to, I have to admit that i, I cut from my backyard bed. yeah so, does your does the pot uh, gilberto have any water in it because someone yes. was asking yeah so someone was asking if you could show the inside of the pot but i don't know if we'll be able to do that with the water live <laughs> yeah, it, will be, it will be challenging <laughs> Very good. How do you use like the like a putty to like a, attach the frog to the bottom of the the vessel? Yes, yes, I do. And the thing, the beauty, the beauty about the putty is that uh, because you can recycle and reuse it and reuse it, you just leave the the pink frog inside the vessel, and that's ready to go. Awesome. That is great. Yeah. So. I love I do too. So Gilberto, while you're while you're putting in those greens, would you say that you have a signature style? I think I do. You know what? Every time that I use, someone asks me that question, I struggle to answer that question. But I feel like after uh, a few experiences that I've been having this this year uh, of teaching some some classes and workshops, I think I finally discovered kind of like how can I name my style. And I feel like if I have to have a signature, it would be Dutch Masters. Yes. I would agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> because you know you know what? I remember a lot of the times people say like, oh it's garden style, garden style. I think yeah, it's garden style is really generic in the way that when you name a style. But this trips to that I to Europe that I made and uh, and going to Amsterdam and all of that, I discovered that actually Dutch Masters is, is a style. Yeah, I love it. I just saw a question come in from Liz Dunn, who's watching on Instagram. Hi, Liz. Um, she is asking, is everything seen today available to purchase through Mayish? Um, I've never seen Japanese maple before, and it's beautiful. So I can answer that, but do you want to answer that, Gilberto? Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, I've seen I've seen personally Japanese maple in Mayish. Uh, because I've seen it. Uh, this one I just got from my backyard. Uh, I, so I, I can resist, sorry, because I see things in the, uh, just in nature and I want to be just using them. But yes, the, question, the answer is yes, I've seen it in Mage before and I purchased it from Mage before. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And we, we do carry uh, Japanese maple. I don't know off the top of my head what the availability is like the season is for it um but that's something that we can ask david um in our next session so that's that's great 
perfect. All right, so yes, definitely think you have a signature style. I love it. When I see something by you, I always feel like I think of Dutch Masters paintings for sure, um, especially because of, you know, just your setup that you have there, for example, with all of the other accessories and how you style everything too. Um, it's not just about the flowers. You bring in a whole bunch of other elements, which I just think creates a lot of depth to, to your designs. Yeah, I feel like it's really important to curate and complement your compositions because I, I'm a real believer that you have to tell a story. And when you tell a story, everything is more, is more cohesive. And this is kind of like a marketing trip, guys, uh, tip that I'm going to give you. So when you sell something, people, they don't care what you sell, right? If you come to someone and you say, I'm selling this, they will say, like, yeah, I don't want to hear about it. But when you're telling the story, People, they want to listen, and they're listening, paying attention. So I, I learned that uh, actually from Ralph Lauren, because that's what he does. Ralph Lauren, he tells stories. So just, just think about it. When you, for example, think about sailing, what do you wear when you go sailing? Ralph Lauren. Horses, Ralph Lauren. New York, Ralph Lauren, because it's selling the story. So. I learned that from him, and that's the reason why I feel like I found my voice and my designing and how I create things, because people pay attention to the details and the stories. It's not about what you're selling, it's how you sell. Yeah, I love that. Um, I had another question come in from Jane. She wants to know what the green is that looks like eucalyptus. I think it's what you have in your hand right now. This one right here is Cotinus. Perfect. Thank you. And this is lovely. So when it's spring, uh, summertime, like the end of the spring or summertime, this blooms and, it's, and the blooms is called smoke bush. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. I love it. Good to know, Gilberto. All right. So my next question for you is obviously I love your work. And um, people want to know about where you get inspiration from. You know, right now I know you're you're pulling inspiration from Ralph Lauren, um, but you know we did get a question in from Laura that kind of piggybacks on that. She wants to know where do you find your inspiration? Are there any non-floral related books, podcasts, websites that you follow that help stir up creativity in your floral design work? Definitely, I find inspiration in everything. I know it sounds cliche, but it's true. I find inspiration in everything in the way that you have to keep your mind open all the time and you have to be analyzing things all the time. So movies gave me a source of inspiration, a book, a feeling. I mean, when you're in your, in your yard or in the countryside, just wandering, that's an inspiration too. Recently, I just came back from, from, from Belgium and I took the flower retreat with Emily, with European, and that was really inspiring because Literally, we were in the middle of nowhere in the countryside in a chateau that was built in, in the, I mean, I think it was like, the day that it was built, it was 1067, something like that. I mean, it was like yeah. a thousand years old, like really, really old. Right. And because there's nothing else to do, you're just connecting with nature and wandering in the gardens and the woods. That's also a source of inspiration that you have to, I feel like at the end of the day, the inspiration it's a muscle and the brain is a muscle. So you have to exercise it all the time. And actually, I remember one time watching a documentary that they were talking about inspiration. I, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit nerdy sometimes. And I love algebra. <laughs> so, I love it. So I remember that they say in the documentary that there's a formula for inspiration, okay? And inspiration, basically the formula is, there's something that is already made Okay, and there's something that it have never been tried before. So if you take the reference that is already made and then you start finding the solutions or the possibilities that someone didn't apply into that something is already made, it's equals your creativity or equals whatever you want to create. I don't know if it makes sense what I'm saying. It makes sense. Absolutely. So I feel like at the end of the day, you have to be really receptive and like be aware about what's around you and paying attention 
and nourish yourself with no matter what. It can be books, it can be movies, it can be art, it can be life experiences. So I don't know if that answered the question. I'm sorry, I was like really back in the rabbit hole. <laughs> no, no, I think it did. Um, what are the items that you're putting in the design now? Okay, so this is uh, millet, and I'm gonna add this uh, pineapple, I think it's a pineapple um, succulent. That's super cool. Did you get that at Mash? Yes, I did. Fun. Yeah, I think that's our local. So, Gilberto, your work is always beautifully photographed, at least the things that I see, at least on your website and Instagram. Is that something that you do in house? I feel like obviously you do that with great intention. So love to learn about kind of your thoughts and your process on how you make that work. Yes, um, I photographed in house. Actually, as a matter of fact, I asked my husband like two Christmas ago for, for a camera. Um, uh, I have a knowledge, a basic knowledge in, in, in photo because uh, when I went to college, I went to college to study uh, arts and um, film, you know, like, like movies and stuff, but apply into marketing. So um, that's kind of like probably the reason why God refers like that because I did have an idea about marketing. But uh, yes, everything is in house except for campaigns. So as a tip that I'm going to give you, when you find a photographer that you really like and speaks to you and understands your job and um, your work and how to photograph it, just stay with that photographer and build a relationship with that photographer. So when you build like a style shoot or even a wedding that you're working together, you know that you're gonna have good material to post and to create content. But in the meantime, I feel like I just I, I just don't post just because I wanna post something on my Instagram. First of all, Instagram and um, any social media is a tool that we have a luxury nowadays. Back in the days, it was really expensive to create marketing because there was, just like TV and radio and those ads were really, really expensive. Now we are in in a modern world where we can create no matter what in the flat in, in free platforms. So if you feel like creating an arrangement, do it for yourself, put it out there and that's how you're gonna present the world or, or the world's gonna be aware about you. So let me be like do I recap in this question? Yes, everything is in house. Yes, everything is intentional. So um, that's my my advice that I can give you about how to create content. That's great. And so do you, so do you take your own pictures since you know you've kind of were trained with the whole the film piece of it and all of that? I do. Very good. And do you use a camera or do you actually just use your uh, your phone? Both. Both. I have a Nikon D850. That's what I use for, for photography and also my, 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 my phone. Very good. Good to know. Thanks for sharing. Okay, so what are you doing now with the design? So right now I'm adding this brown uh, symbio markets that actually they, could, they look like leather to me. So this, this, this brings like, a, like this leather, musky, masculine touch on it. Yeah. And it looks like you're breaking up the stem. Like you're not using like the big giant long stem. You're kind of breaking it up. Yes. Yes. I'm breaking up the stem because if you break up the stem, you have more product to use. And also you can create depth. For example, if I use this and then I put it like, like this, I can create more depth in it. and I can place it in different uh, positions and, and ways around my design. Very good. All right, guys, just a reminder, if you have any other questions, make sure you post them for Gilberto and we'll be able to answer them as we go. Um, my next question for you is, you mentioned it briefly, um, talking about social media, but how important is social media in driving new customers to your business? Oh, that's really important. That's really, really, really important. Uh, because first of all, Social media is your portfolio. 
Okay. Uh, yes, it's really important to have a website. Don't get me wrong. But a website sometimes you can like procrastinate and you're not updating the website all the time. But in social media, you're able to engage the people, to connect to people, and they are aware about what's happening with your company, with yourself. So I do believe that is really important, and also it's really important to curate your content. Post a uh, uh, with, with a strategy, and uh, be aware about that. Yes, it's a free tool, but it's also a tool that everybody's watching you. So be careful about how you use it. Very great advice. I'm, a, I'm right now adding a antique hydrangea, which those are gorgeous. Very pretty. It's beautiful. And guys, just a reminder, in case you're joining us, I see more people um, joining us on Instagram. Welcome, welcome. And I still we still have our peeps on YouTube and Facebook. But just want to let you guys know that the best viewing experience is over on YouTube and Facebook just because Gilberto needed kind of the space horizontally. Um, so like you'll notice on Instagram, it's a little bit cut off. Um, so if you wanted to hop on over there, that would be great. Uh, can you add his IG? So yes, his Instagram is dogwood and fur all spelled out. Um, I'm going to post it in the comments here for you guys. I'll post it at the end as well. And again, just a reminder, um, as we're watching um, all of this information, I'm going to repost the replay of the video and I'll have my show notes up there for you guys as well um, with all of the links for you. Um, and I will ask my helper on my team. Um, she's helping me today on Instagram if she can post uh, Dogwood and Furs uh, Instagram in the comments over there. That would be great. Thank you very much. Okay. So, right. so did you put a hydrangea like high up? Is that, is that yeah. what that is? Yeah. So I always like to play with uh, depth, height, movement, and all of that, especially with hydrangeas. Hydrangeas can be a little bit tricky because they're like really big and clump, like big clumps. So you have to break it up and in order to make it look graciously because if not, it just looks like look. Yeah. Can we see what the front of it looks like so far? So I'm making it two-sided, but okay. to me, I feel like this is more like the front of the arrangement. Got it. Yeah. So I'm going to start focusing actually more on this area right here to build a momentum in there. Perfect. Um, Julie is asking uh, what the budget was for the arrangement that either you're making or the one that was already created. <laughs> uh, well, that's a good question. Um, so the budget, it depends on how you want to see it. Usually the way around my business is the rule of 60-40. So obviously in the pricing of the arrangement, you're contemplating uh, cost of your salary, salaries, transportation, all of that. And uh, that's for a wedding. Usually that's how I want it. Right. Let's say, for example, um, a centerpiece for a wedding is three hundred fifty dollars. So, and you have fifteen arrangements. So, three hundred and fifty plus fifteen, it, it gives you that number. And then your installation, and then this and this and this and this. So, the total number, then you're gonna take forty percent of that number for um, expenses, for uh, cost of goods and flowers, and sixty percent has to be your 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 revenue, your uh, your profit. But in something like this, I mean, if you really want to break down prices, you can do it by stem. Uh, it depends, for example, let's say that uh, the bunch of this vernaculas cost uh, $15 and it comes in 10. So it's, um, let's say it's $2 per, per vernacular, then you have to mark it up. Uh, I like to mark it up four times at least because two times it doesn't make justice. You have to cover everything. So let's say that if you pay $2 per vernacular, you mark it up times four, so it's eight. So it's $8 per vernacular. And I have one, two, three, four vernaculas in there. So eight times three, no, four, is uh, 24. Is it 24? Eight times, yep. 
Okay, so it's 24. And so, and so, and so, and so. So that's how you mark it up. So let's say that at the end of the day, this information actually costs uh, $800. So that's kind of like how you mark it up, or how you, I'm sorry, how you price it. How you price it. So the price would be around 800 for that, the large one. Yeah. Thank you. Um, someone was asking for me to show your Instagram across the bottom of the screen. I'm not sure if you guys, whoever requested that might be on Instagram. Um, it's a little bit cut off, but it's dogwood and fur all spelled out. Um, and again, we will we post it in the comments as well for you guys. You can so, follow Gilberto. I'm starting to add this, uh, sweet Natalie Dahlias. I love dahlias though, and dahlias are in season right now, and they go out of season after the fall season. So take it when it should be dahlias. Yes, and I love too, uh, Gilberto, how you kind of are mixing the lighter colors with the darker colors too. Did you you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, of course. Um, uh, in here, we are creating some sort of contrast, but also in the contrast that I'm creating here, it has to have uh, harmony because I, I don't like to create like really harsh contrast. So if you take a look, this is a lighter color, but it has some like uh, lavender hues in it. So it's kind of like a soft transition between the burgundy and the lighter color that is, because if I put white in it, it's just harsh. And here it's kind of like a, a, a soft transition to a lighter color. Very good. And actually, I mean, it will complement the color story because the problem is that if you use just like harsh, harsh colors, it doesn't complement the color story. Now, in here, I'm going to turn it. And if you can see, I have some kind of like lavender and blue tones in these hydrangeas right here. So this is going to complement the dahlias. Beautiful. So, Gilberto, we've been talking a lot about sustainability this year with this year's Mayish Design Stars series videos. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about what your philosophy towards sustainability for your company is. Well, sustainability comes in many sizes and colors and ways. Okay, right. so um, I'm aware that the flower industry is an industry. Okay. So as an industry, there's some ways that, of course, uh, because it's an industry, you have to make profit. And uh, you have to look for ways, of course, to make profit. And everything that is industrialized requires a process of uh, mass production. But we do have awareness about those type of things. So the way when we try to approach sustainability is uh, especially with recycling. For us, I think it's really, really important to recycle. I mean, when you get flowers, it comes with a lot of packaged plastic. For example, all the rubber bands, we remove the rubber bands and uh, we reuse the rubber bands. I have like a huge jar with rubber bands that we repurpose. Uh, paper with paper, plastic with plastic. We actually create compost. Uh, we separate all the greens and we create compost. So that's my approach in sustainability. And also, I mean, when I can buy local, I Good to know. Thank you, Gilberto. So I, I saw a question, but it disappeared. So I don't know where it went, but I did see someone ask uh, if we could show a list of flowers that you used in the design. So would you be able to send that over to me after we're done here live? Yeah, definitely. Perfect. Thank you. And again, guys, I'll put that in the show notes. So that way, that way you have it there and you have the list. Okie dokie. So, um, I had some questions come in from Deborah. Actually, um, let's do Laura. So Laura sent in one about inspiration. She also uh, wanted to ask you about, um, what types of finishing kind of floaters, dancers, wonky stems do you like to use in fall and winter for your floral arrangements? Uh, ooh, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, well, in here, I'm in San Diego, California, so we do have a lot of uh, flowers year-round. I mean, there's seasonality, but it's not so like the, the East Coast or the Midwest, right? Um, 
when 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 I get those type of like dancing, airy, ethereal blooms, usually it's like butterfly ranunculus, which I have some in here actually. I will add it to the end. I have uh, brown lysianthems, I have ranunculus itself, uh, scabiosas. Uh, we, you can do astrantia, you can do tweedia, you can do um, horcuckles. There's a lot of like airy uh, flowers that you can use for that. Hellebores, I mean, fall season and winter season, I've seen a, a lot of hellebores. It's more like a winter flower, but I've seen it around in fall season, so you can use hellebores as well. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, my next question for you is from Laura. She also wanted to know, do you have any trends alerts for 2024 that you may be seeing? Trends alert for 2024. Uh, God, that's a good question. You know, Laura, I know that as a society, we, we get influenced by pop culture. But I feel like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it's a trend. Follow your gut. Follow yourself and what you like. Find your voice and just put it out there. Because if, if you jump into a trend, that's something that you will be like, it, it will feel genuine. It doesn't come from the heart and a trend it will disappear eventually. So maybe don't follow a trend, create your own trend. We got you got a bunch of thumbs up and loves on uh, Facebook for that statement right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but that's true. I mean So you don't really you don't really follow trends or things like that. You just kind of look for your inspiration, you design things that feel true to you and obviously satisfy what your customer is looking for. And that's kind of, that's how you go about figuring out what you're going to design. Yeah. I mean, honestly, yes. And I may sound uh, ugly for what I'm going to say, but I was tired to see on Instagram and Facebook and every, everywhere about the Barbie trend. I wish, that's the reason why I don't like trends because then you open your feed and every single other one is the same and it just don't. I mean, that's cool, dog. Don't get me wrong. It's the hysteria. That's the same as the pop culture and the, and the moment. But ah, it's just it's exhausting to see over and over and over and over things. Well, we didn't help that with our Barbie uh, Instagram <laughs> challenge. <laughs> Sorry. No, I mean, it's okay. No, I mean, we had, there's a lot of people, even when in, in within the own company, when, when we were like, we're going to do this Barbie challenge. And there were some people like, what, you know, but yeah. for us, it was just fun. You know, we weren't, I'm not expecting to see pink for like ever and ever and ever. Who knows? Maybe, know. maybe we'll see lots of pink things. Well, the magenta um, was the, the color of this year. What was that? The magenta was the Pantone, the Pantone of this year. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. yeah. So who knows, right? I mean, at the end of the day, it's, 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 up, it's up to you, like what you like and what you hard designers. But uh, it, that was my opinion, and I hope I didn't sound mean or hurt people. No, I don't think you sounded mean at all. I think it's it's a good, genuine, from your heart answer. Thank you. I, I, I felt like I sound like a hater. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, well, I mean, with the Barbie thing, everyone has their thing. But just with trends in general, I think yeah. I think it's good. I I do think people um, are like curious about trends and things like that because they want to know like what are their brides going to come in like what what, in and, and and it's like the every you know twenty brides yeah, have yeah. come in they're asking for the same thing. Um, so I think but, that's okay. where people are curious about that type of thing. So that this follow my next statement, guys. <laughs> if the bride or the client is going to come with an idea about what's trendy, so that means that actually they are just browsing and checking through the cheapest one. You don't want you don't want to be the cheapest one in the room because that means that uh, you're competing with us in the same bucket for the, for for the same deal and who can who can make it cheaper. 
But if you do things with your heart, if you do things with passion, because that's what you like, you discover your voice, then the client's gonna come to you looking for you, what you can create. And at the end of the day, I mean, this is, this is a business. And this is, this is what you have, what you do with passion and love of tons of effort lifting buckets. So you have to be compensated in a way that you have to understand your value as an artist, as a designer, and as a business owner, that when your clients come to you, they're gonna to come to you because they want you. Know who can make it cheaper. So that's my take on trends. Very good. Okay, I have, I feel like a complicated question from Deborah because okay. she she's just she said she was tra trained in pattern based floristry and is just beginning her journey on design. Um, okay. She said she's been diving into elements and principles mm -hmm. and understanding what each are, but she's finding it overwhelmingly difficult and trying to implement them into her work. So okay. she wants to know what should I focus on to begin with? Should I try to implement many principles as possible to each element? How do I know if an element is out of balance? Um, and she's like, I would just love to know a good tip on each element and principle, e.g. what's one good tip working with color, line, form, texture, et cetera. I don't know if we have time to get into all of that, but do you have anything, any kind of insight that you could share with her? Well, that's actually a really good question. And Deborah, I put us on that because I do, I'm a, Sometimes I believe really like the purest person. I mean, I do believe that uh, in order to understand what you're doing, you have to understand the basics and the principles. And actually, I'm gonna make a commercial in here. Um, I, uh, this year I came with this uh, workshop, which is from still life to real life. That's the name of, of, of the class. Where actually I'm teaching all those principles with truth, but applied into floral designing. It's just not about art. It's applied to floor design, and I have uh, examples about how to use them, uh, and you can see them. It's really graphic. Uh, real quick, before you move on, and we forget what you just said, still life to real life is that? Yeah. Okay. That's, that, that's the name of the, of the of the class. From still life to real life, like still life painting, but to real yeah. life. Yeah. Okay. Um, unfortunately, it's not available online. Yet is not available uh, book yet. I just came up uh, with that this year. Uh, we start teaching in Nantucket. It seems like we're gonna go back to Nantucket next year. Actually, we just sponsored that. It was lovely. Um, uh, we start in Nantucket. It seems like we're gonna go back in Nantucket. We have a workshop in Mexico City in in a month. Uh, that will be in Spanish. We have the same class in France in Strasbourg. That's in French. But uh, in English, we are planning on next year in Nantucket. So stay tuned on that one. I mean, this is just something that we came out this year with. Uh, eventually, down the road, I know that, thanks God, if, if that happens, I can like, put in a line and, or have a book or something. But uh, Deborah, going back to your question, uh, there's a lot of ways to apply that. I recommend maybe uh, watch some tutorials in YouTube about the principles of art, because those are really, really good examples. They explain with, with images and it's easier to understand how to apply it. But um, I'm gonna give you a demonstration about that right here in what I'm doing. So uh, rhythm and repetition, for example, I have one, two, three, like this dahlias right here, this is a rhythm and repetition. I'm putting here, here in here. A rhythm repetition creates to a pattern that is pleasant to the eye. Here and here and here, I have this um, roses, which are that mixture roses, and it creates a rhythm and repetition. I mean, in here, I do have lines, okay? These lines are in here. This is uh, an asymmetrical line, and, and also this is creating a focal point. I don't know if it makes sense. I mean, I can really, really deep dive into that conversation because I love 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 to like talk about it but it's it's really extensive yeah i figured we wouldn't have a lot of time to dive into that that question but i i appreciate that and we actually have to wrap up in a couple of minutes here so do you want to oh, kind of yeah i know right okay 
So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm glad that I made this one right here because you can see it all <laughs> together. I knew that if this will happen, you know, that it right. will have tons of questions and conversations that I will be finishing the, the, the whole arrangement. Uh, but, uh, guys, take, take, take advantage of all these last minutes, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Awesome. Good, good, good. Um, maybe let's fit in one more question, Gilberto. Okay. Um, where did you find your, like your style to fit your client's preference? I think that's the question they want to ask. Where did you find your niche slash style to fit your client's preference? Does that make sense to you? Mm, I think so. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Um, I feel like finding your client is not like, it, that doesn't happen by coincidence. You have to have an understanding about who you are as a person, uh, what you like. Mm -hmm. And once you put that out there and you, you have a clear conscious about who you want as a client, that is how, how it's going to fall into it, how you're going to find it. Per se, let's say that um, I want demographics between 25 and 40 years old, millennials. Okay, that's really big. But then if I dive deep into it, okay, I want professionals who actually, I don't know, they're attorneys and because I like the attorney personality, maybe I will create arrangements uh, or my art will be really into attorney aesthetics and that's how you're going to attract your client. I don't know. Or modern, if I'm really modern, maybe my, my, my demographics will be uh, tech people and I'm going to create arrangements that they're like really minimalistic because the tech mind works like that and they're simple. I don't know if it makes sense what I'm saying. That's kind of like how you start like mm -hmm. throwing ideas about who you want as a client and then you start cater um, your art or accommodating your art and your company to that niche. Very good. Very good. <sighs> Let's squeeze in a couple more. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, Julie wants to know what the diameter of the urn is. So that one's, that one's easy and straightforward. Uh, I think this one is a six. No, eight. Very good. Eight inches. And then Laura's question is, how do you treat weddings? Do you ask their designs or do you design it for them? So I do design for them, uh, but that's kind of like really, really down the road. Because if you start designing since the beginning, uh, they're going to take your ideas and they're going to sell it to the best leader. So the way how you do it or the way I do it, a lot of people that I know they do it is once they approach you, you have a consultation, right? Based on the consultation, you ask the questions, and which is basic, basic questions, guest counts, uh, the, the, uh, bridal party, blah, 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 blah. Now that you have all those numbers, you start uh, narrowing down about it how much poten potential it will be based on your experience. Now, after that, I think it's really, really important to be on the same page with a client, to ask a vision board, expectations and references, because that will help a lot to understand uh, the expectations of the client, like what, what is in their mind and understanding the aesthetics. Based on that, like for example, I'm having a wedding in September which the bride, she loves really like Rococo, right? But I knew that she liked Rococo, no, because she told me, oh, I love Rococo. It's because the, the reference that she was sending me, they look Rococo to me. So in a consultation, I say, oh, you like Rococo art? She was like, oh, yes, that's my vibe. Okay, perfect. So based on that vibe, and after narrow down about the way she sees the world, then I start put together a mood board. Of course, after she signed the contract, and we have a uh, faucet, a retainer. Always say that retainer. Because uh, you are not working for free. Your, idea, your ideas are not for free. So once you have a retainer and a contract, then you start working on the mood board. You start like, oh, I do deep dive into like, okay, Rococo references. And then I start like pulling out Rococo reference, Rococo peer of art, music, how they dress the colors that they were using back in the days, blah, 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 to pull up with aesthetics. And then that's how you present your mood board, your references, how the arrangement is going to be. Like for this wedding in specific, 
uh, is going to be in a ballroom named Versailles Ballroom here in San Diego, which is lovely, it has like all the mirrors and everything. So I went to all the big shops in town and I purchased like porcelain uh, vases with uh, figurines and like crystal pot uh, compotes that represent the Rococo period and it's going to look cohesive. I love it, Gilberto. So I was going to. As I told you, I'm a little bit of a nerd. I love that you're nerdy. That's like my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Gilberto, you mentioned that you you have these workshops coming up. Do you have anything else new coming up? Uh, I'm still working on my perfume line. Sorry, that takes too much too much time. You know, it's a process. Right. Um, but so far, this is what's coming on. I mean, this has been a really really busy year. We've been traveling a lot, especially because now we are doing things internationally in around the world, basically, it's, it, with a workshop. But, uh, I mean, stay tuned on my, on my social medias on Instagram because we're posting what's happening and when it's happening and all of that. Very good. So exciting. Well, yeah. thank you so much for joining us today, Gilberto. No, thank you for the invitation. I mean, guys, sorry if I didn't finish the whole product and my whole uh, arrangement here. Uh, I was so chit-chatting and I love to chat and to share because sharing is scary. And I, I do feel like, you know, you know, Yvonne, I mean, after teaching, I realized how fulfilling it is to share what you learn. Right. I, I, I don't, I don't see, actually, I don't feel like I'm teaching because teaching, I feel like it's a position where, oh, I'm wrong. I'm, 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 I'm good. You're wrong. I'm sharing. I see like I'm sharing the little knowledge that I have. And also I'm, I'm getting feedback in, when I share the knowledge in the way that, oh, maybe I can do this differently. Or this is this some reinforcement about what I think or what I've been learning. So yeah, it's good. It is good. And sharing is caring. And we love, we love helping our artists and designers doing that on our platform and so again you know thanks for joining our first fall flower fest and having fun with me today i hope you guys had fun gilberto you're amazing and so talented um and again just i just love love working with you anytime we get a chance to do anything with you we're we're all about it so thank you from the bottom of my heart for just being that amazing person that you are Thank you, but and full disclosure, I did watch Barbie and I really like it. Okay. <laughs> I watched Barbie too and I liked it too. But the rest of my family did not. I cried, <laughs> I laughed, my oldest looked at me like I was crazy, but you know, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> to I'm each sorry. their own. <laughs> yeah, don't hate me about about like about what I say about the, the trend, because I did like it. It's just my, my humble opinion. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I promise we will never hold that against you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Good, good, good. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. I love you guys all. Um, and that's a wrap for our first segment with Gilberto. I'm going to take a quick break, and then I will be back live with David Dawson at 1215 with his beautiful lineup of fall flowers. Um, and then Deanna is going to be joining me right after that with some tips on how to utilize pre-book to its fullest extent to reduce your wedding season stress. And then finally, Allison Ellis will be wrapping up the day with me at 145 with insight on pricing your weddings for profit and how to manage subs and stay on budget. So guys, I really appreciate your time and your support, and I will see you in a few. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys, and happy fall. Happy fall.